challenges in DBS are really that we have a very individual brains, very individual causes of disease and very individual expectations from our patients with respect to the therapy. So what we want here in DBS is stimulate a very specific point in space without stimulating the neighboring uh, structures around uh, the nucleus. Uh, with the classic electrodes we were obliged to stimulate in a circular way around the electrode. It's as if you want to shine a light on a specific point in space, but you are obliged to shine everywhere around you. You do not want that. So with the directional lead, we have the possibility of steering the light, steering the current towards a very specific point in space and avoiding the structures that you do not want to stimulate. Well, the key question is, you know, who needs a directional system? The key problem is, before the surgery, you cannot decide on who is going to be perfectly implanted and who is not being perfectly implanted. So we have to resolve this conundrum. We have to basically better understand where is the sweet spot inside the subthalamic nucleus to place our electrodes and hence then to improve programming with directional leads or placement even of conventional DBS electrodes. So this is a general objection on an individual patient level. I think the patient has the right to obtain best possible treatment and uh, directional DBS is giving us more flexibility in programming. So I would implant uh, direction aids in all the patients because if it would turn out that it's not really necessary, you can still stimulate with all segments and thus stimulate as if you had implanted the classic ring electrode. So up until now we focused on the lead, but of course the lead is part of the system. The impulse generator which steers the lead, which uh, gives the current, is as important. And specifically for direction leads there is uh, a challenge because the smaller the contact, the higher the impedance. With small contacts in a segmented lead, impedance plays a larger role. So the smaller the contact becomes, the higher is the impedance of the contact. And you will see more variability in impedance between different contacts. If you want to precisely control steering and rotation in a horizontal plane, then you have to make sure that uh, a predefined amount of current is being directed through the different contacts. In a single source system, that amount of basically current that flows through individual contacts is passively dictated by impedance differences. And only an MICC, a multiple independent current control system, which is precisely determining the amount of current that is going through one or the other contact, can give you a full control over the steering effect of a lead. So that is you know, very technically. Uh, speaking uh, the advantage of multiple independent current control over single source current control. So the multiple independent current sources that uh, are typical for Boston have already proven uh, their benefit in the past, but specifically for these directional leads, they offer us more possibilities because the ring that is uh, uh, divided in three segments does not allow us to only steer in these three directions, but because of these multiple sources, we have many possibilities on ring, actually about 12 uh, possibilities. So that gives us many more possibilities than only three segments. Currently we are in a preliminary phase, so we, we get some experience with these new uh, leads, and it's possible that in the future, uh, with more experience and more data, we will, that will change the way we will implant the, the, the leads. I really think that the real technological advancements uh, since the last 10 to 15 years is the directional stimulation.